Every day, wild animals lose more of their habitat. We've failed at sharing the planet with these magnificent creatures. And we're at serious risk of losing them. On the front line, conservationists work tirelessly. In dangerous conditions, using extreme techniques. Driven by passion, ambition and necessity, they persevere through triumph and tragedy. Doing whatever it takes to restore the balance. This is saving the wild. Southern Africa. Its vast and varied terrain is changing. At the beginning of the 20th century, hundreds of thousands of rhinoceros roamed here. Their size and distinctive horns have earned them a place amongst the big five wildlife tourist attractions in Southern Africa. Species of rhinoceros have roamed here for 50 million years, but their numbers are dwindling. After the last male northern white rhino died, aged 45 in 2018, there remain only two rhino subspecies in Africa, the southern white rhino and the critically endangered black rhino. Nkomazi Game Reserve is home to some amazing wildlife, but poachers have attacked. In a matter of weeks, poachers have reduced the rhino herd at Nkomazi Game Reserve to just five. It is no longer safe. Unable to protect them, management of the reserve have reached out to conservationist group Elephants, Rhinos, People for help. Rushing an expert team of vets and animal transportation specialists to the scene, ERP have no choice but to get the remaining rhinos out of the area. It is a task requiring logistics, technology, medical expertise and a lot of human hands. This is the normal Dan and Jack barrel looks like. Yeah. Sorry, we'll use a pulse range. It's like a 13 mm. Yeah. We'll, we'll use we'll a pulse range. range. The family of rhinos are unaware that their home is unsafe and are easily located. Encouraging them to move out, however, is an entirely different matter.
Despite weighing over a ton, these rhinos can move at speeds up to 55 kilometers per hour and must be tranquilized in order for the team to get close enough to capture them. Rhinoceros skin can grow over five centimeters thick and must be pierced by a tranquilizer dart head on. Any angle on the shot could see the dart ricochet off, aggravating the rhino and leaving him untranquilized. Within minutes, the darts begin to take effect and the vets can make their approach. Once the condition of the rhino is checked and its eyes covered, a vet administers a reversal to the tranquilization. The dose is carefully measured to ensure that they remain calm but are still capable of walking. Each rhino must be carefully led and nudged into the specially designed transport containers. It can take a single poacher to kill one of these unique creatures, to butcher them for their horns, but it takes many humans to protect them. The helicopter locates and darts the remaining two rhinos. The trucks are standing by. The team may have arrived just in time for this young calf. Yes. 
Criminals make defenseless orphans out of rhino calves. The calf survived a bullet wound that entered the left shoulder and passed out the right, miraculously missing vital organs, and he was orphaned as a result of the poaching. This is the life of a rhino today, a two-ton animal that needs 10 men to guide it while under anesthesia, completely reliant on conservationists for its safety. Misguidedly hunted for their horns, these once powerful animals are at the mercy of criminal gangs and of their patient rescuers, vulnerable in the expanding human world. It's a beautiful landscape, perfect for rhinos, but unfortunately it's not safe for them anymore. Relocation of rhinos to Dino Ken. They are expanding the habitat and secure fencing around the game reserve at Dino Ken, which has not had the black rhino in the region for over a hundred years. The population is declining in South Africa overall. There are 15 allocated black rhinos to Dino Ken. They have a target of increasing the habitat of the population of black rhinos to 3,000 hectares. This team is finalising fencing around new property in the expanded reserve, which has been assessed by conservationists as being suitable for the rhino, having appropriate vegetation, security and can be made safe from poachers. The fence is now complete and the reserve awaits its new inhabitants. In this sanctuary, there are a number of black rhinos waiting to be relocated. They are being held in holding pens known as BOMARs. An experienced team begins the relocation process.
Each rhino has to be sedated sufficiently to minimize stress in the confined crate used by the relocation truck. The Bomars are back to back and in rows. Loose poles can be removed to facilitate easy transfer of the rhino into the transportation crates. A white flag on a pole is used to help guide the rhino through the opening without placing rangers in danger of being crushed. Each rhino is given medical attention in their crate. Their vitals are checked, ears are blocked to muffle vehicle and transportation sounds, and extra sedation is provided to keep them calm. The crates are loaded and the rhinos are ready for their journey ahead. Part of the team has gone ahead to investigate suitable release locations so that the team don't encounter any unforeseen circumstances. There is always some risk in relocating larger animals to safer reserves. To date, no rhino has been lost in the transportation process thanks to the experienced teams used in these operations. Just as in loading, the release process requires careful team management as risk for getting hurt for both animal and human is high. Transportation holds risks. This rhino didn't make it unscathed from the crate and emerges with injuries. But help is standing by. The team inspects the rhino's injuries and applies an ointment which will heal the area. Each stage of rescue and relocation requires this utmost care. Tracking devices are attached to the rhino's ankles.
And finally, after another transportation exercise, this time when the rhinos wake, it will be in their new home, free of predation. At Dino Ken, a fence is down. An emergency team is being called. It is a suspected rhino breakout. The rhino is on the loose and unprotected, in danger from hunters and accidents. Every rhino that is introduced to the reserve is fitted with a radio collar. This simple technology provides a different frequency to identify each individual animal. The louder the beep, the closer the rhino. has been deployed to help the search. Using tracking technology, the escaped rhino has been located. Medical staff are on their way. The team must act swiftly to locate an escaped rhino, as a stressed rhino in unfamiliar territory can act erratically and be a danger to itself. It is very bad news. In its panic, this rhino has slammed and wedged himself into a small grove of trees. He is barely breathing and in a critical state. The medical emergency is urgent, the working environment poor an oxygen tube is inserted into well, one nostril. The team begin in their attempt to disentangle him from the trees. Antiseptic is applied to all his wounds and he is watered down to cool him from the blistering heat. Lifting ropes are secured around all of his legs in readiness for a difficult maneuver. Nothing about this rescue is preferred practice, but they need to get the injured rhino to a fully equipped surgery. The 1300 kilogram rhino is successfully lifted onto the truck platform and the veterinary team accompanies him for medical treatment. The escaped rhino is taken back to the BOMA for closer monitoring and observations until he is recovered enough to be returned to the reserve safely. 
check voltage. Now that the rhino has been rescued, a ranger has returned to ensure the fence has been restored and the reserve again is secure. As the rhino's natural living space diminishes, the species faces another insidious threat. Illegal hunting fueled by organized crime for the black market trade for their horn. A rhino's horn usually ends up in China and Vietnam as a bogus medicine or an ornament. The violence and desecration these creatures endure at the hands of poachers is heartbreaking. Conservationists faced heart-wrenching and confronting scenes on a daily basis. This is the brutality and gore the poachers leave in their wake. Siha is the sole survivor of a vicious poaching attack in the middle of the night. The 12-year-old bull had both his horns hacked off, leaving a gaping wound extending to his nasal cavities. When the police met with the despondent property owners, they were preparing to euthanize him. Affected by what they saw, the police contacted Saving the Survivors, a team of vets who treat wild animals that survive poaching injuries. After a life-saving surgery on his wounds, Siha was moved to a holding facility to recover. It was the first of many operations and the beginning of a long journey of healing. Siha will need medical attention for the rest of his life. Today, the wound will be cleaned and checked. The team needs at least 10 metres of strong nylon rope to guide the 1,300 kilogram animal. Immobilising a rhino in an enclosure is not without its challenges. With his large size, Siha will need a team on standby to move or roll him while under sedation. Okay, if we overexcite him for the anaesthetic, it doesn't go smoothly. So if you can also stand back and I'll let you know when you can move it. The brief sting of the tranquilizer dart is always a dangerous moment. Siha seems to be resisting the effects of the drug. Perhaps one of the reasons for Siha's continuing survival is his stubborn personality. Covering his eyes has a calming effect. It takes seven adults to roll him on his side.
Then he needs to be held up so he doesn't topple over. His microchip is checked as a standard procedure. Finally, he's injected with the antidote to the anesthesia. Definitely time to get out of the way before he wakes up. After a few months, the vets return. They decide the wound has healed enough so the Siha can safely be translocated from his small yard to a rhino sanctuary. It will be a secret location with 24-7 armed security. Once it's safe enough to get close, they'll guide him into the transport crate. Like most wild animals, rhinos don't like confined spaces. So to make this work, he'll be sedated again. It's a process he clearly doesn't like.
is not going according to plan. He's fallen into his drinking trough. This could spell disaster for an anaesthetized animal. takes all the might of a large team to guide him to safety. He's in, but the hardest part isn't over. If anything goes wrong during the transportation, all this will have been in vain.
seems a miracle that Siha survived the unspeakable cruelty done to him in the name of greed. But he will need ongoing medical care and some luck to lead a fulfilling life. It will be in a protected natural habitat where he may find some peace. As an anti-poaching tactic, many rhino populations are being dehorned by vets in the hope that it will increase their chances of survival. A large team has been gathered in order to dehorn the southern white rhino. A convoy of vets and conservations head into the reserve. Here is a likely customer. Rhino horn consists mostly of keratin. Like hair and fingernails, the horn grows continuously. The rhino's horn has started to grow back, which means he's a target for poachers again. Clear terrain is chosen to prevent narcotized animals running into obstacles. How many men does it take to change a white rhino? More than two, it seems. This big fella is not going down. Rhinos weigh up to 1,300 kilograms, so it's essential that a team of at least six people are on standby to move or roll the immobilized animal. Oh, 
Finally, he's down. But before the work can begin, the feet need to be carefully placed to stop him toppling over during the treatment. Okay, push that side. Push, push, push back. What? Okay, or. Reserve workers have arrived to help with the dehorning. So we go between the... Horn obtained from dehorned rhinos must be photographed, measured, microchipped and details of the horn submitted to nature conservation authorities. The front horn is marked about eight centimeters from the base. 39, that is, that is E1. Yeah. Yeah, I'm giving it a torsional 21 of meter. So stu students note that the um, 40 milligrams, it's a 10 to 1 ratio. Can I write it in your the additional? By the way, the red warning marks are The ears are blocked to prevent damage from the noise of the saw. In a reserve with limited security, the horn will need a trim every 12 months, removing what the poachers want. A six inch grinder trims off the extra horn and rounds off the stump. They apply an antibacterial wound spray that contains an antiseptic to prevent an infection and insect repellent. Okay, lost your time. The antidote to anesthesia is administered. Poaching is pervasive wherever rhinos are, 
And now, there's less risk that this one will be butchered. Rhinos are darted from helicopters due to their maneuverability. The helicopter herds the rhinos away from dangerous obstacles and reduces the likelihood of losing the rhino after darting. The pilot spots a mother and calf within the reserve and they are darted successfully. Rhino calves stay with their mothers for up to three and a half years. With her mother not far away, this calf is guided towards the team and quickly succumbs to the tranquilizer. Not too far away, the calf's mother struggles against the effects of the sedation but safely succumbs. The team get to work. If dehorning is done incorrectly and the horn is cut too close to the germinal layer, the process can cause infections, cavitation and deformed regrowth. An infection has been discovered within the regrowth of the horn. The team cleaned out the buildup in the cavity, allowing the infection to drain. The area is then sterilized and medically treated to promote healing. There was something strange. While this mother is under sedation, the team will use the opportunity to check if she's pregnant again. An ultrasound probe allows the vet to view the rhino's uterus and ovaries, which cannot be seen otherwise due to its location within a rhino's anatomy. There is indeed new life in the making. Get on the road. In the road. We need everybody to help push it over. The calf is now fully sedated and prepared for tagging. The ear is cramped and a small incision creates an ear notch which gives the calf a unique identification mark. This informs future teams that the calf has previously been dehorned. The calf is woken first, so that she is not left behind by her mother. All vehicles and people leave the area to ensure mother and calf find each other without stress. They are safe, calf and her pregnant mother signaling new life and perhaps hope.